and welcome to Mendix How To's. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to work with datetime functions by building a simple countdown app in native mobile. Let's take a look. Starting in the domain model, I have created the entity countdown as a persistable entity. This entity has four attributes, target date time, display, started, and formatted date. Going to the home page, I add a data view to the page and choose a Nanoflow as its data source. We only need the target dates and time, so we can remove the rest of the data view widgets. Now, add a label to the page and populate it with the formatted date time using a placeholder. Below that label, we can add a Nanoflow button and connect it to a new Nanoflow. Give it the caption, start, with an icon. I use a layout grid next to help with the alignment of the page elements. After that, I add the app events widget to the page. I come back to configure this later, but first I need some more buttons for my functions. I add four buttons for stopping the countdown adding or subtracting years, and to trim the date to days. Finally, I add a display attribute to the page using a label. The final step for the user interface is to add visibility rules to the page. This is so that when I click start, the page will update its display to hide the start button and make all the others visible I use started, the boolean value, as the attribute value for this.
Next, on the start button, right click and go to the flow. Add a change object activity. We need to change the started value to its opposite value whenever this button is clicked. We use the not function for this. Make sure to commit the countdown object here. Next, I work on adding years, same as before. I change the countdown entity. This time, I use add years to add a year to the target date time. Track the year and use add years again, but this time I add negative one, which will subtract this from the target date time. For the last button, I use trim to day in order to remove the hours and minutes from the date time value. that app events widget, which we added earlier. Back on the page, we can go to the widget properties and set the timer to run every second. Also, select an anaphobe to be executed when the timer is triggered. In this nanoflow, we need to calculate the time difference in seconds using the total time in seconds. And some maths, we can work out the years, days, hours, and minutes between the target date and the current date. Remember to always subtract the value for years before calculating the days, and so on, in order to ensure your times are accurate.
Once I have all my values worked out, I can set them in my display string. Here I use some simple string concatenation to set all the values. Format the date. I add counting down to E and then append the target date, but I use a format date time to set the date format. save and run my app. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it and perhaps learned something new. Until next time, Bye for now, and remember, go make it.